So what is up guys, Nick here helping you to master your technology and welcome to iOS 12 developer beta versus Android P or Pi, now known as Android 9. So in this video, we're gonna take a look at both of these softwares to kind of help you to see which one you're gonna wanna go with here in this coming iPhone Pixel season. This is what we're gonna be working with in terms of software. Okay, so you can see I'm confirming their softwares here, Android Pi on the right, and we do have iOS 12 to confirm that further. You can see Android 9 right there. So this is the official version, but digital well-being feature for Android Pi is still in beta. Okay, so on the surface, both iOS 12 and Android 9 Pi don't look very different from last year's versions, but Google definitely made a little bit more changes to the visual user interface than Apple did this year. Apple's more doing a refinement year on the many complaints of iOS 11 from last year. So we're gonna discuss some of the visual changes, but maybe in iOS 13 we'll see an update to the icons and stuff like that, but not this year. Okay, so let's take a look at the differences in their control center. So visually the control center for iOS is actually changing a little bit in just the contrast, a little bit darker here in iOS 12, but the actual buttons and toggles and things like that don't change up too much. Now on the Google side, they do. This is updated and when you pull this down, you now get a little bit of a vibration haptic feedback when you pull down that, which feels pretty nice. It feels like a little refinement here. And you could still add toggles in the control center part or notification tray of the Pixel 2. So definitely a different UI going on for this side, a little bit more modern and clean than last year's Pixel on Android 8. But iOS 12, basically the same as iOS 11 in the control center area. So I should also mention in settings, it's more colorful now, redesign icons here along the side of your menu, making for a colorful experience on the Pixel now. We've had this on iPhone already, but welcome to the world of color for at least the stock Android experience. Now, one of the biggest changes here is the new gesture-based UI here for the Google Pixel 2 XL. It kind of gets similar to an iPhone 10 where you have to swipe up on here and go ahead and go into your applications tray. Now it's horizontal versus the vertical. You can also use this little gesture bar to kind of swipe through the applications down here. But however, if you do have a lot open, you kind of have to use this one because you know it can only go so far or you can just hold it and it could kind of go through each one of them. But overall, this is really new here. Definitely a different visual user interface. And if you notice something here on Android 9 Pi, they move the clock all the way over to the left, which signifies we're probably gonna see a notch. Now, out of the box, you cannot actually use the gestures until you go into your system settings, and then you go into gestures, and you gotta turn on swipe up from the home button. So you have the ability to go back to your classic, you know, circle, uh, square and back button here, or you can turn on your gestures and get the pill. I personally like to use the gestures because it's the newer way Google's going with the software. So I definitely like this. Now to get into your app tray, it's not as easy anymore as a simple swipe up because you just go to the multitasking. But now you have to do a long swipe to get into those applications. So that's how it works. A short swipe is gonna go into your multitasking, a long swipe goes into the full app tray. Now, if you notice the horizontal app tray is definitely reminiscent of iOS as it goes sideways here on iOS. Now you're going sideways on Android. However, it's a little bit, it doesn't like hide the app behind it like it does here on iOS. And on the iPhone 10 with iOS 12, you can just swipe away. There's no more holding it down to hit that X up at the top. So definitely they're gonna be very similar in the way you multitask. Just you don't have an app drawer still for iOS and you probably never will see one on iOS, so still the grid of icons, still the classic app drawer available for Android. So a noticeable visual change on the Pixel that isn't happening is the volume splash screen or little toggle here. For the iPhone, you see it's still that big square that annoys some people, not everybody, same as what you see on an iMac, for example, or an iPad. But over here for Google, they now moved it over here. So it's off to the side, kind of out of your way. You have your do not disturb, silent, and all that right there. You don't have a silent switch physically, but software wise, it's over here now for the Google Pixel. So that's a nice little touch that they changed for Android Pie here on the Pixel. No changes there visually for the iPhone. So just like you can do forever on the iPhone Plus series, you can rotate and landscape view here to, uh, as long as you have the, you know, the lock thing not disabled here. So if as long as this is not highlighted, then it won't lock in portrait 
for the iOS 12 on the Plus series. The iPhone 10 Plus is rumored to get this as well. It seems like this is the year of auto-rotate the home screen, at least on the stock launchers, as Samsung brought that over to their devices as well. So a neat little touch that Google did here with Android 9 Pie is that even if you have auto-rotate not turned on for the device, let me swipe this note away, if you have auto rotate turned off, it still will give you a little prompt now at the bottom of the device to click this little button and it'll lock it in place. And you can see it won't go back until you hit that button. So the whole moving it back and forth and it annoying you, that's kind of gone here for the Pixel as you have this little button down here that locks it into the place you want. Now, if you put it this way, it's not going to lock until you hit that button again. So this is a nice little touch that Google brought. And now your pixel does rotate in landscape without downloading Nova Launcher or anything like that. Okay. So there's a couple changes to notifications. First of all, you finally get group notifications on iOS 12 over here. If you do take a screenshot now, there's bigger previews on the pixel in the notifications tray. You can see they're much larger here. And also you get smart replies with the pixel 2 XL as well. Like when somebody messages you, there'll be like an AI assisted little message that might help you decide what you want to type before you type it. Some say it's creepy. Some people will find it useful. Moving on, are you distracted so much by your smartphone? Well, Google and Apple will have your back this year, at least to try to help you stop using your phone or at least see how much addicted you are to certain apps. In iOS 12, you now have screen time, which is gonna tell you, you know, how much you've been using the phone and which applications, and you could set app limits here as well. You do have the downtime mode, and you also have, you know, content and privacy restrictions all built right in here in screen time, but it's really gonna lay it out for you very nicely with graphs telling you your use, uh, how much you use each application. And then over here for the Pixel, right now in beta, you do have digital well-being. So if we go into settings and we go down, I did install it, digital well-being. You could see you have your dashboard, wind down. It's gonna turn your phone into a grayscale at a certain time that you set and let you sleep a little bit better. It shows you like this little circle and tells you all the applications you're doing. So there's similar features on both and do not disturb, just gets a little bit more feature packed for the Pixel 2 XL. So, and this can help you curb, maybe if you have a social media addiction or maybe you have a entertainment, watching too much Netflix addiction, who knows, maybe this can help you out and uh, just monitoring your use and getting on in the present moment more often than being in the digital world 24 seven. Quickly wanna show you how these look when you do power them off on iOS over here, iOS 12 that is, you do have the normal way it's been powering off forever. Over here on the Pixel 2 XL, you now have it off to the right, kind of similar to before, but there you go. That's how you power off the Pixel 2 XL. Now discussing their batteries, there's actually a new mode here for the iPhone, which is gonna tell you just a little bit about your stats and graphs, laying it out a little bit more in depth. So that's a little bit new here on iOS 12. Also battery health, is out of beta, no longer in beta, so you can rely on that to be more accurate now. And low power mode still exists here, helping you get better battery life on iOS 12. Now over here for Android 9 Pie, we have the new adaptive battery mode. So if we go into settings and we go into battery, let's go into battery, we have the new adaptive battery, which basically is gonna figure out, you know, how you use your phone and shut down old applications you're not using in the background. It's gonna adapt to your usage. And this is pretty cool if you don't, you're not the type of person who wants to manage your battery and watch videos like I've made on certain phones before to get better battery life. Adaptive battery life can help you just get on with your life, turn it on, and you should get better battery life automatically. Now, of course, you do get a low battery power mode here on the Pixel. Turn on your battery saver. You can extend your battery just like the low power mode for iOS 12. The Google Pixel 2 XL also has new app actions and slices. If we go into home settings here and we go into suggestions, you can see actions are turned on. AI is gonna try to predict what you wanna do next in the Google search. It doesn't always appear, but it will be as you start using your phone more and figure out what you like to do. It's gonna tell you, you know, when the next Lyft driver is close by or when the next movie's playing, where you can, you know, go watch it, stuff like that, and show you little previews. On the iOS side, you still have the classic 3D touch, which got a little bit more saturated, a little bit darker, easier to read. So that's its way of doing like a short, you know, quick action is still, 3D touch, but a lot of applications now 
on the Google Pixel do have a similar feature to the 3D Touch, as you can see right there, trending subscription search. So they're getting pretty evenly matched when it comes to these shortcuts to get into things. I do want to mention that the animations are a little bit different on the Pixel 2 for this new Android P update. As you can see, they fly in just a little bit different. And the phone overall has actually felt a little bit slower so far for me on Android 9 Pie versus Android 8.0 Oreo, probably because it's the first version. As it gets updated, it'll get faster and smoother, but this is the official version now. Over here on iOS 12, this has similar animations to before, but they're just quicker now. So the iOS applications have been running fantastic here for iOS 12. And I think iPhone users, you have a lot to look forward to when it comes to the speed and fluidity of your device here this year. iOS 12 is really going to rock it. And GM builds later in the year or well, probably within a month now are going to probably bring even more speed improvements. So iOS 12 looking very good so far in terms of performance. And that's not to say the Pixel 2 is not performing well. It's performing very well. I just found that it feels a little bit slower than it did on the prior Android 8.0 version I was on. But the new Gesture UI is very slick and smooth. Lastly, battery life has definitely improved for the Pixel 2 XL and battery life actually has improved on iOS 12 as well. So both sides of the coin this year are getting improvements to the battery department, which is always good. In conclusion, both are very much still very capable smartphones. iOS 12 is still the very Apple experience. So if you're into this ecosystem and you love the Apple devices, nothing's gonna change for you. You're really gonna love iOS 12. It just brings some refinements, faster speed, better battery life and the way iOS 11 probably should have been. Now on the Pixel side, you just get more features and more refinements and you change up the UI a little bit. They're probably gonna adopt a notch here with the Google Pixel on Android 9 Pie. But if you use Pixel on 8.0, you're gonna know how to use this. It's not that difficult to use. It's just bringing some refinements, making the Pixel experience just a little bit better, but still it's a very Android experience. And if you're in Google's ecosystem, you're really gonna like what Android 9 is bringing. But as always with Android, the customization factor is still there. You're not forced to use the gestures if you don't want. So that's it. That's iOS 12 versus Android 9 Pie. Both of these are fantastic softwares, but I do think that Google is definitely more on the AI, more trying to be more search assistant style of software Whereas Apple's is more about the apps, about the app polish, you know, just giving you what you've been knowing, what you've had forever with a few more features just to make your iPhone experience a little bit more feature packed. Still very, you know, similar to iOS 10, iOS 11, not too much change, just bringing you back that speed, that battery life, that reliability you look forward to in the Apple experience. If you find this video helpful, enjoyable, entertaining, informing, do me a favor, click that like button for me. And if you're new here, consider subscribing for more. Thank you very much for watching. Nick here helping you to master your technology. Be sure to be well and peace.